Welcome to the second lecture. In this lecture, we'll take a look at the folder structure and assets for our project. We'll take a look at the design of our augmented reality dashboard. And we'll take a look at the libraries that we're going to use to create it. The AR application is not part of the dashboard we are creating for the Strawberry Fields project. But it can be opened using the QR code at the dashboard. This QR code contains the URL, but also the ID of your sensor device. So the URL opens the index.html file of our AR application and the application itself works marker based. So when it recognizes this marker, it will show the sensor values as augmented reality in form of a bar chart. The folder structure we are going to use to create our application is the same as we will be using at the server. At the root is our AR folder, which at this level only holds one file, which is the index.html file. In the assets folder, we'll find the four images that we are going to use as icons. In the JS folder, we see our application, so the JavaScript. The pattern folder holds one file, which is the pattern. AR.js, the library we are going to use to create the augmented reality, needs this file to recognize our marker. We'll be using Visual Studio Code to write our script and inside Visual Code we'll use the Live Server extension to run the application locally on your computer. How simple our augmented reality dashboard may look, it still involves some design decisions. So the first one is that we gave it a title. Well, there's nothing wrong with the title and it can be helpful to understand what we are looking at. Then for the units we didn't choose to write them in text. So we didn't use the word temperature or humidity or light intensity, but we've chosen to use icons. Now this is because in 3D texts are often not very easy to read. But of course the chosen icons may be the start of a discussion. So the question is, does the icon successfully represent the unit for which it is used? I think for temperature and light intensity there's not much discussion possible, but the humidity might be reason for discussions. If this for you is reason to use your own icons, please go ahead and do so. The bars in our bar chart represent the actual values of the sensor data. Now mapping sensor values between a minimum and a maximum, as we do in a bar, is on itself a good data representation. But in our dashboard we use multiple units. This means that one bar cannot be compared to another. For example, comparing the height of the temperature bar with that of the humidity bar is not valid. So this is one of the risks of our bar chart. It may lead to users that draw the wrong conclusions. Another choice has been made regarding the ranges for each unit. So temperature has a range of minus 20 Celsius degrees to plus 40. This makes sense but other options are of course always possible. Humidity from 0 to 100% just is the whole range. And how we come from lux values to light intensity in 10 steps is based on an algorithm, which we will discuss later in this section. Our application is built using A-Frame. The A-Frame library's homepage can be found at aframe.io. We are most interested in the documentation and this gives us a nice code example of the strength of A-Frame. In the documentation we have this getting started page and I copy this code. You see it's HTML code and then I go to Visual Studio. In the index.html file I will paste the code. I save it and I open the page with the live server. And here we see a virtual reality. Some basic geometric figures, like a box, a sphere, a cylinder, and on the ground we see a plane. Also there's a sky. Let's take a look at the script. So first of all, it's HTML. So A-Frame lifts a lot of the functionalities we know from FreeJS into the HTML environment. First of all, we see that the library is imported using the script tag. In the body, we see that A-Frame uses its own tags. They all start with a dash. A dash scene opens the scene and inside the scene we see some tags for simple geometries like a box or a sphere or a cylinder or a plane. And also there seems to be a tag for the sky. 
What we also see is that each element has attributes by which we can define the characteristics of the element. For example, the position or the rotation or color. So aspects of the material. Let's give it a try and try to change the color of our sky. So back in the code, I click on the color attribute of the sky and change it into a nice black. Save it and the page is reloaded. And this is the result. So a nice black sky with the same geometries. So that's how simple manipulations can be done in a frame. To sum it up, in A-Frame, VRs can be created using customized tags. We see tags for simple geometries like a box, a sphere, a cylinder or a plane. And even tags for a sky. The tags create elements and the elements have attributes that define them. This way, manipulations of the 3D object or the element can be easily done within the HTML file. An example of this is how we have changed the color of the sky. Being based on entity components means that A-Frame also supports that you create your own components. In the DOM or our index.html file, they are instantiated by the tag a-entity, followed by the name of the component. In the JavaScript, custom components are registered using the register component method. This method takes in two arguments. The first one is the name of the component, and the other one is an object that describes the component's behavior. For our own project, we are going to create one component. This is the component that generates the bars for our bar chart. With A-Frame, we create our virtual reality, but for our dashboard, we still need the augmented aspect. Therefore, we need to go to the library AR.js. This library can be embedded in A-Frame and adds the augmented reality functionalities to it. AR supports three kinds of augmented reality. The one we see to the left is marker-based. But this is a special case of marker-based augmented reality, because the marker is embedded inside the QR code. In our project, we are only going to use the marker, because the QR code is generated dynamically based on your sensor's ID. In the middle, we see a location-based augmented reality. This is actually how Pokemon Go works. So the augmented reality is triggered by the GPS coordinates. This is not likely to work successfully for our application. In a strawberry field, there might be over 100,000 strawberry plants. So the GPS coordinates will probably not be precise enough to point to a specific strawberry plant. The third approach to augmented reality that's supported by the library is image-based. So the application recognizes the image and then starts the augmented reality. Also, this is not applicable for our application. We will include the A-Frame and AR.js libraries into our project by downloading them. Therefore, we need the script tag. And inside the script tag, there is an attribute called source. And there we place the URL to where we can download the libraries. These links are available at the home pages of the libraries. Please notice that we've used A-Frame's version 1.3 and this version of the AR.js library. Make sure to test if you're working with another version. And this finishes up the lecture. See you in the next one.